Let's go a little further into our study of acids and bases so that we can understand the theory behind how they act. So in the previous unit, we looked at the pH and the properties of acids and bases. We applied the math to the pH and the pOH and hopefully had a little better understanding of what pH actually tells us. So when you have water, it has the ability to take another proton into its structure where that lone pair of electrons are to form the hydronium ion, and then it also has the ability to lose that hydrogen ion and form the hydroxide ion. The self-ionization of water and how water behaves as both an acid and a base depends on its ability to do both. If you look at water reacting with water in any sample of pure water, you're going to have 1 times 10 to the negative 7 hydronium and 1 times 10 to the negative 7 hydroxide ions. One water molecule donates the hydrogen ion and the other accepts it. So here were your math relationships and most of you were able to apply those pretty quickly. Every once in a while you'll get confused. Uh, am I taking the negative log of something or the anti-log of the negative? But for the most part, most people did a very nice job on both worksheets and on the um, assessment. So let's just do a few more review. So in the next uh, few slides, you're going to have some questions uh, just to review those pH and pOH calculations before we move on to the theory. So there are two basic acid-base theories. There are actually three, but the third one is more advanced and not really necessary at this level. So the first theory... Sponte Arrhenius, a Swedish chemist, proposed one of the earliest definitions of acids and bases. By this definition, an acid is a substance that dissociates in water to produce hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are strongly attracted to the partially negative ends of water molecules and exist as hydronium ions. An Arrhenius base is a substance that dissociates in water to produce hydroxide ions. As acids and bases were better understood, more general definitions were proposed. The Bronsted-Lowry theory defines an acid as a hydrogen ion donor and a base as a hydrogen ion acceptor. The Bronsted-Lowry theory is more general than the Arrhenius theory. So, uh, Svante Arrhenius came up with the first, and, and most acids and bases will fit his definition just fine. That is that acids produce hydronium ions in water and bases produce hydroxide ions in water. But Arrhenius required that you were in a water solution. And it also did not really discuss the mechanism of what that hydrogen ion does. So Bronsted and Lowry came up with another definition, another theory, and this is the one that we will be using. This is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. And Bronsted and Lowry, again, developed their theory because there were quite a few non-aqueous systems where there is no water, but substances still can act as acids and bases. So their definition is that an acid is a proton or hydrogen ion donor and a base is a proton or hydrogen ion acceptor. We call the hydrogen ion a proton because 99.9% .9 of hydrogen, remember when you were learning about your isotopes, most hydrogen has no neutrons. So if you take away that electron to form the positive cation, 
you have nothing but a proton in the nucleus. So chemists often refer to the hydrogen ion as a proton. And you'll see me using the terms interchangeably. But acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. You cannot have an acid without a base. You can't have a base without an acid. So if you're looking at a typical acid, so here we're just using A and B, you've got the hydrogen ion attached to some uh, anion, and that hydrogen ion is transferred over to the base. That makes the base a proton acceptor. That then leaves the acid, once it has lost that hydrogen, it forms what we call its conjugate base, and the base, by taking that proton, forms a conjugate acid. So acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors, and they always come in pairs. And after that hydrogen ion or proton has been transferred from the acid to the base, they form conjugate acids and bases. So using our definition, Okay. You can see that the hydrogen, you know that the acid acted like a hydrogen because you, excuse me, acted like an acid because you can see over here its conjugate base, which is everything that remains after you remove that proton from the acid. Okay, So HCl had to donate the proton. Water took it to form the hydronium ion that left the chloride ion. So conjugates, conjugate acids are related to the base, and conjugate bases are related to the original acid. Your conjugates are on opposite sides of the acids and bases. Let's look at another reaction. Here, the HCl acid donated a proton forming the hydronium ion. So if this is the base and this is the acid, then when that base takes that proton, it forms the conjugate acid, conjugate acid, leaving, so what is ever left from your acid is called the conjugate base. And if you look at the reverse reaction, so for these products to reverse and make these reactants, so let's look. We had the reversible reaction. This would be the acid. It would be donating that proton back. So it would be the acid. That's why we call it the conjugate acid. And the chloride ion would be the conjugate base as it would be accepting that proton. In this reaction, water is acting like the acid, donating the proton to the ammonia molecule, forming the conjugate acid, the ammonium ion, leaving the conjugate base. So, an acid is related to its conjugate base by one hydrogen ion. So, a conjugate base is the acid with one of those hydrogen ions removed. Hydroxide is the conjugate base of water. The ammonium ion is the conjugate acid of the base ammonia. Water can act like a base as well as an acid. So if we put water with something that is a stronger acid than it is, since water is both an acid and a base, it can act like an acid or a base. So if you have a stronger acid, then water will act like the base. So it will accept the proton. So water is the base because we can see that it's the proton acceptor. HCl is the acid. We can see that it was the proton donor. We can tell it was the donor because look at what's left, it lost that proton over here, leaving the conjugate base, okay? 
and when that extra hydrogen ion was added to water, the hydronium ion is the conjugate acid. Water can act like an acid when it's with something that is more basic. So here we've got the base, which is the ammonia molecule. Water donates the proton, forming the ammonium ion and leaving the conjugate base hydroxide. Since water is giving up a proton, it's a Bronsted-Lowry acid. So the proton donor is the acid, the proton acceptor is the base. Whatever is left of the acid after it loses the proton is the conjugate base, and whatever is formed when the proton adds, is added to that base, is called the conjugate acid. So a base and its conjugate acid, an acid and its conjugate base. So when a substance donates a proton, the substance that is left is its conjugate base. So acetic acid forms the, kind of covering up that negative charge of the acetate ion, the acetate ion, which is the conjugate base of acetic acid. When a substance accepts a proton, so in this case, where did it get that proton? It got it from the acetic acid. When that substance accepts that proton, the species that it forms is its conjugate acid. So acids and bases have to be together on one side of the equation and the conjugate acids and bases are formed on the other side. Often people think the conjugate acids and bases are these. This is the acid. This is the base. This is the proton donor. This is the proton acceptor. This is the conjugate acid of this base. This is the conjugate base of this acid. Conjugate base is everything that remains of the acid molecule after a proton is lost. The conjugate acid is formed when the proton is transferred. Okay. Conjugate acids and conjugate bases are still acids and bases in their own right. So if we were just looking at these two species without the others, this would definitely be the proton donor because chloride doesn't have a proton. If it lost its proton, it would become water and the chloride ion would become HCl. So really putting the term conjugate on it is just letting us understand what side of the reaction we're talking about. This is an acid, this is a base, this is still an acid, and this is a base. But the conjugate acid is related to the base by a proton, and the acid is related to the conjugate base by a proton. So let's look at this. So this is acetic acid, and acetic acid is a stronger acid than water. So that means it is gonna act like the acid and water is going to act like the base. So if you wanna pause the video to write down what you think would be formed, you may not be there yet. So this hydrogen would be transferred over. Anytime you add a proton to water, you know you form the hydronium ion. If you remove that hydrogen ion, that's gonna leave you with the acetate ion. So this was a neutral molecule. If you take that hydrogen off, your conjugate base has to have a negative charge. So you're gonna form the acetate ion and the hydronium ion. So this is the acid, it donated the proton. This is the base, it accepted the proton. This is what's left of the acid, so that's the conjugate base. And this is the proton added to that base, so that becomes the conjugate acid. So let's look over here. 
hydrobromic acid is more acidic than water. So the proton is going to move over here, forming the hydronium ion, leaving the bromide ion. Forming the hydronium ion and the bromide ion. You have a neutral molecule if you remove that hydrogen. Notice if you move that hydrogen over here, it's going to make a positively charged ion. If you remove it, you're going to be left with a negative ion. Now you've got ammonia and water, and ammonia is a base. So water is now the acid. So now the proton moves from water to ammonia. So water is now the acid. That makes ammonia the base. So if ammonia takes that proton in, you're going to form the ammonium ion by adding that extra hydrogen. If you remove one of these hydrogens by transferring it, that's going to leave you with the hydroxide ion. Conjugate acid, conjugate base. Notice that the hydronium ion in all of these cases was the conjugate acid, okay, until you got to where you had water acting as an acid. And then you formed the conjugate base by removing the proton from water. So your conjugate pairs are on opposite sides. The fluoride ion is the conjugate base of hydrofluoric acid, and water is the base with hydronium ion is the conjugate acid. So you can always tell if you have a complete equation where that proton moved. It had to go to ammonia in order to form the ammonium ion, leaving the hydroxide ion. Here it had to go to the water molecule, forming the hydronium ion and leaving the cyanide ion. Here, looking at what's left, it had to be transferred to water to form the hydronium ion leaving the um, HCOO negative ion. Some substances that are amphoteric can be proton donors and acceptors. And of course, water is the uh, best example of that. So sometimes a molecule can donate a proton and act as an acid and accept a proton and act as a base. Molecules that have this ability are called amphoteric. They can take in hydrogen ions and they can give them up. Water is the most common, but there are others. So let's look at some species and see if you can figure out whether or not they can have both a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. So if this is your acid. In order to form a conjugate acid, you would have to be able to add an H plus ion. So let's put that up there. You'd have to add an H plus ion. Add. Try to write that. A conjugate base, you'd have to remove an H plus ion. So if you can take that formula and both add and remove a hydrogen ion and still have a species that could exist, then it would be amphoteric. So let's look. This is phosphoric acid. To have a conjugate acid, we would have to be able to add another hydrogen onto this structure, and you can't. There's no place for it to bond. There's no such species as H4PO4. So it does not have a conjugate acid. Therefore, it can't be amphoteric, but it can have a conjugate base. So if you're thinking about its conjugate base, you're going to remove one of those protons. Okay, actually, I guess removing that is better, uh, what we're looking for. And that's going to leave us with H2PO4. And of course, that's going to have a negative one charge because we've removed a proton. So now look at h 2 PO4 negative 1. Can we add a proton and have a species? We certainly can. We can form 
phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is the conjugate acid of the dihydrogen phosphate ion. Ions can be acids and bases. Many of them are acids and bases. Can we remove one of these protons? Well, we can. We can have HPO4 2 negative, which is hydrogen phosphate ion. So the H2PO4 dihydrogen phosphate is an amphoteric substance. It can both take a proton and give one up. Let's look at the phosphate ion. The phosphate ion certainly cannot donate a proton. It doesn't have one, so it cannot be a conjugate base, but it can form HPO4 2 negative, so it can have a conjugate acid. It is not amphoteric. The hydronium ion cannot gain another proton. It can't have a conjugate acid. It can, of course, have a conjugate base. So water is the conjugate base of the hydronium ion. The hydroxide ion, can you add a hydrogen to it and make a species? You can, that would be water. Water is the conjugate acid of the hydroxide ion. Can you remove a hydrogen from it? You can't, not and form a species that actually exists. Carbonate ion. You can add and form the bicarbonate ion, but you cannot remove a proton. It doesn't have one. Carbonic acid can absolutely lose one of its protons, but not take another one in. Water, of course, is our most common amphoteric substance. The bicarbonate ion is also amphoteric. You saw here that you could get a conjugate acid, okay? So if you have the bicarbonate ion, you can lose a proton to get the carbonate ion, and you can actually gain one to get carbonic acid. So the bicarbonate ion is amphoteric. So if you're trying to decide on what the formula of that conjugate acid or base is, you're just adding or removing a proton. So now let's look at a chemical equation. We have this equation and we can see the products. So we can see that HF donated a proton to water forming the hydronium ion and leaving the fluoride ion. So what are the conjugate acid base pairs? Well, HF acid and F negative are conjugate pairs. That's the acid and its conjugate base. That's not a choice, so that can't be it. Water and its conjugate acid hydronium ion are also conjugate pairs. So there's your answer right there. Here's your reaction. Okay. So we can see that HClO3 donated a proton to ammonia to form the ammonium ion, leaving the chlorate ion. So how do you decide what's paired up? The conjugate acid, so this had to be the base, so the conjugate acid of ammonia is the ammonium ion. Okay. The conjugate base of um, hydrochloric acid, not hydrochloric, excuse me, uh, perchloric acid is the ClO3 negative ion. Okay. So make sure that you know your conjugate pairs are on opposite sides. The conjugate base, if you have an equation, you know right there, okay? That's the only thing that makes sense. Those are related to each other by a hydrogen ion. Those are related to each other. When it becomes trickier is what we did that last time when we just have a formula and we have to figure out what its conjugate base would be, but it's not a big deal. 
we're going to take it off, take that hydrogen off. But when you can follow the chemistry, and this is what Bronsted-Lowry did, they followed that mechanism of that hydrogen ion as it moved from one species to another. So this material should set you up for understanding how the proton moves. It's a simple mechanism of a proton donor and proton acceptor. That then combined with the math begins to build your understanding of acid-base chemistry.